This is my pole saw showdown. And what I'm gonna do is what I do in my other showdown videos is compare for you a bunch of similar but different kind of related tools which are designed for doing pretty much the same job but function very differently. All right, so these are the five pole saws we're gonna take a look at. And we're gonna go from most basic to most gourmet cheapest to most expensive -o. First up is going to be the straight up non-extendable basic pole saw. Then we'll go to the multi-pole pole saw, then the telescoping pole saw. That's a pole saw that gets kind of like bigger and smaller depending on what you need. Then we've got two more telescoping pole saws, but these guys have juice. The first is the electric telescoping pole saw, and the next is the gas-powered Husqvarna telescoping pole saw. All right, so the first pole saw I'm gonna talk about is the no frills job. It's six feet long, and it is a saw on a stick. You can, in this version of the saw on a stick, pop the end off, and this one's made by Burpee. I've had this thing forever. I will put links down below to these various saws if I can find them on Amazon. This one, I don't even think they sell this thing anymore. This is a basic pole saw, really basic. But here is what it's like to use this guy out in the field. I was pruning up some honeysuckle and you know, it just allows you to extend your reach. It's just the most basic pole saw. Extend your reach, make your cut. You're not on a ladder, you're not on your buddy's shoulders, you're not climbing that ratty fence right there. Nothing fancy, it just extends the reach. And keep in mind that you can also make cuts on the ground with a pole saw. You don't need to utilize that full six feet. You can treat it like a short saw or a pole saw. All right, now moving up the food chain, we have the multi-pole pole saw. It's kind of like that first one, but you've got multiple poles to make it longer. Keep in mind that this thing not only has the big old hook blade, but it also has a hook. And that grab hook is a really key part of this tool. I'll show you how that works later. All these sections go together manually, you know, just with this little locking pin on a spring. It's a little fussy, but when you get it locked in, it's a good connection. You put the blade on the tip, and then you put each, each section that you need together connected to the next one. 20 feet of pole saw, or 19 feet if you measure exactly. If you want to upgrade your pole saw, get one of these blades. Those little hooks on the end will keep it from falling off when you get to the end of your cut. And two really small points about the pole saw. One is that one of these units has the rubber bumper on here. And the rubber bumper just peels right off. You might want to stick like a little glue on there so you don't lose it. Some epoxy. And the other thing is that these guys, if you buy a set, they come with three poles. And three poles is long, really long. But if you're going for even longer, you can A, stand on a ladder. It's a little bit sketchy. Or you can get another pole. You can put four poles on these things. I would never try five poles. It's just too awkward, but four poles is kind of sketchily doable. All right, one more cool little feature about this pole saw is that you can also put a lopper, you know, like a pruner on the end of this dude, extend it out, and if you've got 20 feet of rope, 25 feet of rope, you can use the whole pole saw as a pole pruner. I'm not gonna say the pole pruner is like a game changer because, uh, you know, pruners are kinda, they're just kinda awkward, but you know, sometimes with the small branch, you gotta prune it, you just can't cut it because when you try to cut it, the thing just wiggles around too much. So the pole pruner is a nice option. You gotta buy that thing extra though. If you get the notch pole saw, you gotta pay more for the pruner. All right, let's take a look at this multi-pole pole saw in action and this was a partial removal I was doing like I was taking out a good portion of this tree and I started with the pole saw you know cutting it and then pulling it with that hook so cutting you know most of the way through the branch flipping that pole saw around grabbing with the hook and breaking the branch not leaving a perfectly clean cut because I was subsequently taking the rest of that tree out now the cool thing about the multi-pole pole saw is that it can come in handy in other situations as well. Here I was lowering this big old oak branch, like a big old sucker, heavy, and it got stuck up high, kind of stuck in that conifer there, and I used the hook side of the pole saw 
as a tugger, you know, like to pull with. I wasn't cutting with it at all, but just to pull that limb free. Now, I keep my pole saw in a tube on the top of my truck. This is not a telescoping pole saw in the sense that everything tucks away and hides within itself. It's a little bit cumbersome. You know, you got these three different poles, you got your blade tip, you got your pole pruner, and the whole thing, you know, it takes up some space and you got to think about where you're going to store it. Now in this job, I was taking out a hawthorn tree and I dropped like 80% of that tree using a pole saw. You know, it was 15, 20 feet from the ground. I could make most of my cuts safely with the pole saw and tug with that hook to pull those pieces down. All right, next up is my telescoping pole saw. This one is from some company named Hoi Man. I've never heard of them before. And this guy comes apart in a couple ways. You can actually take the saw blade off and use it as a folding hand saw or you can click it back onto the pole and telescope it out. The nice thing about the telescoping pole saw, well, two good things. One is that it's compact, like the whole thing is stored in one place. You have a bunch of poles you're walking around with. The other thing is that you can dial it into the exact length that you want. This one goes out to 10 feet, but you can get a 20 plus foot telescoping pole saw. Now the obvious bummer about this telescopic pole saw is the blade. This blade is just rinky dink. It's just, you know, what is that, like six, seven inches? No curve to it, no terminal catch point, nothing like that. Um, it works, like you can cut with it, but it's just not really like a working saw. This, this telescopic pole saw is not like the kind you would get if you were gonna be working with it all the time, constantly making a lot of cuts. The other thing about the telescoping pole saw is that it has potential to be carried with you. You know, you can actually hang this thing on your belt if you're climbing a tree, climbing a tree blind. Here's the telescoping pole saw in action, and it works like the other ones, you know? It's a saw and a stick. The cool thing about the telescoping stick is that you can dial in the length, and you're not carrying around a bunch of poles. But with this one, the real advantage is that you can bring it up with you into a tree. So if you're a tree climber, you can bring it up there, you can use the folding handsaw part part of it, or you can extend it out and make cuts that are, you know, unreachable. Five, six, ten feet away, you can make those cuts with your telescoping pole saw. Now let me just say there are nicer electric pole saws out there. This Remington, man, I've had this thing forever. It's okay. You know, it's not, I'm not wanting to trash on Remington or anything, but it's not the best. You can get a still electric pole saw, which is pretty sweet. I think there's even a battery powered electric pole saw. All right, now the obvious difference here is that you are telescoping out a big, heavy electric chainsaw. And that guy, if you're going horizontal, has got some weight to it. And just so you know, this is like a regular little electric uh, chainsaw that just attaches to this pole. So it comes on and off the pole and it's straight up like any other chainsaw. You gotta add oil to it right here, bar oil. You should keep it cleaner than I keep mine, sharpen your chain, etc. This guy stretches out to 10 feet. I do believe there are longer telescoping electric pole saws than this one. And if you're out there using it, the only real consideration here is your cord. You gotta think about that cord, how long of a cord you have, you have access to power, etc. You can use these guys for shorter cuts. You know, you don't have to be reaching up 20 feet for a cut or longer stuff. And when you go vertical with your telescoping electric pole saw, it's a lot less cumbersome. Like you're not holding that weight out on the end of a horizontal pole. Instead, it's straight up above you in the air. Okay, on to the gas powered pole saw. Now this guy is like the Rolls Royce of pole saws. All right, now, it's hard to explain this aspect of the tool, but this Husqvarna pole saw and the still is really similar. It just feels good. Like, it feels good in your hands. It's got a balance to it. And as a tool, it's something you can use for an extended period of time. It doesn't wear you out too badly. You know, it's, it's got some weight to it, but it doesn't wear you out. It extends nicely. It's just, it's just like a well-made tool. Extending out to about 11 feet, and I think like the other one, you can actually get a longer version these days. Or the only thing that's kind of funky about this one is that your oil reservoir, reservoir is down here by the chain. That kind of makes sense. You know, the oil reservoir by the chain so the oiler can keep the chain lubricated. But the motor, you know, the engine is down at the other end. So this end 
looks like a freaking uh, weed whacker on crack. You got the weed whacker end down here, and you got the chainsaw end on the other side. Inside the pipe are some kind of flat uh, steel strips. It doesn't have a crankshaft, it has these like flexible steel uh, strips that twist and power the chain. There are a few brands out there of the gas powered pole saw. In my opinion, the Husqvarna and the Still are the best, but Remington also makes one and there are a few others. Now in this job, we were stripping this tree down about halfway up before we cut the rest of it down. And for that, we just use the telescoping pole saw. You know, it's a, it's an easier saw to use than the manual pole saw. It's not quite as precise and it's not quite as long, but man, Cutting these big limbs with the manual pole saw would take some time and some work and really kind of beat you up. This is a quick, efficient way to do it. You don't have a cord to trip over, and in some ways I think you're safer. You know, you're not up in the tree making your cuts. In other ways, it does pose a danger. You don't want to drop those limbs on you, obviously, and you don't want to drop them on your buddy or whoever you're working with. And here we're doing tree work, but a lot of people use these for hedges and bushes and you don't necessarily need to fully extend them. You know, you can shrink these guys down and cut pieces on the ground, cut pieces that are just, you know, six, seven feet away from you. The gas powered pole saw for a lot of us is a very nice tool in very specific situations where you need to be a distance away from your cut, but you still want to make that cut very effectively. So that is my pole saw showdown, but I gotta end this video by telling you which of these saws is my actual favorite. I do have a favorite in here. It's the saw that I would not do without. Like if I only had one pole saw, it would be the Notch Multi-Pole Pole Saw. It's just kind of an awesome mix of basic, you know, really simple like this guy, and it'll do what this guy will do. It will do everything the battery powered or the electric powered or the gas powered extendable pole saw will do. It's just a little bit slower. But the thing about these pole saws that you get used to if you're doing pruning work and high tree work that is that sort of out of reach is that these guys make a really, really clean cut. You get a cleaner cut, like a nice, really clean pole saw pruning cut from a handsaw. A cleaner cut than with a chainsaw. Chainsaw cuts, they're always just like a little bit ragged, especially if they're 18 feet away from you and you're swinging that thing up in the air. But dang, if I had a really good extendable manual pole saw, like one of these telescoping guys, I might like that even more. All right, that's it. Thanks for checking out the video. Hit me with a comment down below. Maybe you know something about these pole saws that I have no clue about, or you have a question or something like that. And otherwise, just uh, know that you can check out other showdowns on my channel. They're part of like a playlist, and I've got that link to down below.